book can take you anywhere. Turn the pages and you'll be there. Come on, join us, you'll see. We're reading with Carrie Lee. Hi, friends, and thank you for joining me for another Read with Carol Lee, where I have authors from all over the world come in, coming to read their books to you. And it's so awesome that we get to visit from place to place. Maybe we'll have an author that's just around the corner from you. So you better stay tuned and make sure you like hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get notification whenever we upload another video. So today we have author Danielle Marita and she is the author of Mr. Baloo. <laughs> I wonder what this is about. I you know why he just seems like such a warm and funny character but since we have authors from all around danielle first of all welcome to the show thank you for having me i'm so excited yes so where are you coming to us from today today i'm coming to you from virginia northern virginia um, I'm originally from Seattle, but I have been out here for so long now. Virginia's home. Well, I think we're neighbors because we are here in Northern Virginia as well. And yeah, it's, it's been a while for me too. So Virginia is home. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So well, I'm not going to waste any more time. I know our friends are ready to get into Mr. Baloo. So Danielle take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much. So yes, I'm excited to share with you all the story of Mr. Maloof. Funny little story in rhyme, so I hope it's something you all enjoy. Mr. Maloof was a silly guy, his mother used to say. He'd hide and play tricks from sun up to sundown each and every day. He'd pop out from behind the curtains or even the bathroom door. One day, he hid under the rug in the middle of the living room floor. Little Maloof, you're such a goof. One day you will see. Not everything is a trick, but rather real as real can be. Silly mommy, what do you know? I'll be doing tricks as long as I grow. Okay, Mr. Maloof, but what happens when you're old? One day you will stop growing and these tricks will be too bold. Never will that happen, he thought. Until that thought festered and grew quite a lot. And then one day it happened. He was goofy no more. He didn't plan schemes that involved popping out from the floor. The day had actually come as his mother said it would. There were no jokes to tell, not even if he could. A frown on his face stretched from his left ear to his right. It was the frowniest frown that anyone had seen that night. A frown so frowny, the pressure built up and he couldn't bring it downy. And out it sprouted, one single hair, not enough for the smallest of ponies. But oh, what was this, this color up here? There was no doubt it was crystal clear, a sliver of color just above his right ear. Look at you, Mr. Goof Maloof, sitting on your chair, grumpy as can be, now that you have this bright blue hair. You huff and pout and stomp about, wondering how this came to be. It wasn't there a week ago, not one, two, or even three. No brushing nor combing, crimping nor curling would tame this little blue beast. There it stood, up on his head, pointing 87 degrees northeast. There he was, thinking thoughts on how to make this quite quick. He could pluck it with tweezers or snip it with snippers, <laughs> snip it with clippers. Yes, that would do the trick. But when he tried to trim and cut, his clippers all broke and he had zero luck. Then he jumped up and out. A hat, he said, will permanently cover this obnoxious little blue on my head. That afternoon, the old Mr. Maloof sat rocking on his stoop 
until three young kids came passing by and said, hey there, you old goof. They laughed and teased until the old man sneezed and his blue hair burst right on through. The hat stood no chance when it came down to it. What bad luck, I should have knew it. Then one kid yelled, his hair is blue. No way, that can't be true. The oldest kid pulled off her hat and blue hair fell right down her back. Mr. Maloof sat still in shock. They waved and continued on around the block. They'll be back, he knew, and planned out just what he'd do. A prank of all pranks, they won't know what hit them. I'll hide in the bushes, then shout blue bligum. Days came and went, but there he stayed, determined not to move. Then one day, here they came, strolling straight down his avenue. When the moment was right, he struck, oh, he striked, and those kids yelled out with all their might. A moment of silence and everyone laughed. What's your name, old man? They asked curiously. Mr. Maloof is what my mother has always called me. We'll get you next time, you silly old goof. And they did, and they did, and they did, and they did. Although Mr. Maloof had grown quite old, his silliness was an art. And that little blue hair that popped up that day reminded him, we are always young at heart. Mr. Malou. Oh, that is a fabulous story about Mr. Malou. And he is so silly. You know, and it's, it's such, it's an, it's an amazing story because, you know, it teaches us that we can be different and it's okay. And Mr. Maloof has his blue hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, so does um, the little girl in the book. But why exactly did you want to write this story? So this one was one of those stories that came to me in a moment. Um, I was, I have three children. So I have a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a three-year-old. And my seven-year-old is very silly, very goofy. Um, and so we are often hiding and popping out on each other and scaring each other. And, you know, sometimes we still have to remind him that there are time and places to be silly and to have the giggles. And there are times not to. Um, but in the whole of things, I think it's important to remember that as we grow up, you know, it's important to still have fun to still yeah. play and to still be young. Um, once you start feeling old, you'll start being old. And I don't want him to feel old. I don't want any of my kids to ever feel old. So um, it was, you know, just one day of them being goofy and 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 it just kind of hit me. And I thought it was important that more kids knew that it's okay or more kids know it's okay to be silly sometimes and to have fun. Yes. And, you know, that is an amazing uh, lesson that kids need to know. Like, yes, there's a time and place, but you have to be young at heart. And, you know, I, I'm kind of reminded that I have a big birthday coming up in a few <laughs> months. And I just kind of said to myself, OK, yeah, I'm supposed to have this big birthday, but I still feel young at heart. I put on my tutu and I strut about and I feel <laughs> I feel so young, you know, and, and being a children's author really brings that out again. Mm -hmm. So are there any other books that you have um, in store or have written? Yes, so actually Mr. Maloof was my second book. Um, my first book is The Holiday After. Oh. So this is, yes, it's my, my Christmas book. It's about Santa and his family and how they celebrate their traditions in the North Pole after Christmas. So after he delivers his presents. So oh. this, is, this is a fun one. This was my book baby. Um, I'm excited to see all the places it goes this year as well. Yes. Well, you know what? Um, and these ideas keep on stirring up and we get inspiration from our children and from other children around. And it's so great that you have, you know, taken it 
upon yourself to really write these books that are silly and fun and really teach children about diversity and um, and get them to really love reading. Thank you. Yes, that's very important to me. I'm I'm really passionate about diversifying children's bookshelves and everyone's bookshelf. And I think yes. we have so many books that are for Black children specifically that, mm -hmm. um, but that focus kind of on them being Black, on our hair, on um, certain history. And I think we also need to have some everyday books. You know, yeah, they yeah. need to see themselves in every light as well. And so while uh, those books are important, I'm really trying to focus on um, just kind of more, more of the everyday type type of stories too, so that they can see themselves as Santa. They can see themselves yeah. being goofy. You know, um, I will have another project coming up um, of a little girl and her doll. And it's just stories of adventures that she has with her, her doll, kind of for a younger crowd, okay. like toddlers. Um, so, you know, just kind of developing those bookshelves and broadening diverse books and what that even means. Yes, I love that. I love that. I love being able to, you know, we're, we're not just, we don't need to be segmented. We can just have all inclusive books and that's what, that's what I love as well. And really making sure that our children can see themselves in books and it doesn't, you know, they can, anyone can pick it up and read Mr. Maloof and <laughs> him being silly and him, you know, and all of the wonderful adventures that authors like you are able to take our children on. So, you know, were there any books that inspired you when you were growing up? Um, one of my favorites was The Giving Tree. Um, and I don't think I realized how much it meant to me until I started writing and then started <laughs> drawing, you know, kind of lines between the two. But The Giving Tree was one of those books that I could read and listen to, uh, listen to my parents read every night. Well, you know what? That is a popular book for authors that has been on Read with Carolee. I think oh, you really? probably, <laughs> you're probably um, the, I would say the fifth or sixth author that has, you know, said oh, wow. that The Giving Tree is one of their favorite books um, that inspired them. So yes, we, you know, we may have to shake things up a little bit and give our audience um, a reading of The Giving Tree. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, we're trying to do different things here to get our audience engaged. And, you know, Miss Danielle, Thank you so much for coming and sharing Mr. Malou with us. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. So friends, we're coming to the end of another Read with Carolee, but be sure to come and join us every week. You never know which author may be coming next. So until then, make sure you grab a book and read, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.